Hello everyone and welcome back to the podcast. A very special guest here. We're live inside North Bay Memorial Gardens. Courtney Kenny from the Frontline Podcast. Courtney, how's it going today, man? I'm pretty excited here, guys. About to get set up with the Eastern Conference Finals. Second year in a row here in North Bay, but this time the Battalion of Home Ice Advantage. And it should be a good series against the Peets because... Well, the battalion have played the piece pretty good all season, so uh, only time will tell, though, of course. Absolutely, and uh, the battalion just wrapped up a big series against the Barry Colts here on Tuesday night, Game 7. Just take us through seven games against the Barry Colts. Well, uh, it didn't start off great in the battalion's favor. They lost Game 1 in overtime in uh, kind of deflating fashion. They had the 2 nothing lead, and then... Let Barry get back into it, and then Brant Clark, of course, public enemy number one in these parts because of his play on the ice, you know, gives the big chef's kiss to the crowd when he scores the tying goal. Um, Not that I'm sure Brant Clark would become a factor later on in the series with anything going on either. But, uh, yeah, so then North Bay comes back with a big win in game two. Head down to Barry, you know, another overtime game in which Barry takes it, and it's kind of unfortunate for North Bay. Um... But again, credit where credit's due. Barry played a very good game in those two uh, first two out of three of the first games. Um, North Bay, they played really good in the start of Game Four as well, being up three to one uh, before North Bay was able to turn things around in that third period and uh, come back and, and win it in double overtime. Which, man, oh man, when you got to work at eight in the morning and you're in Barry, yeah, not a great feeling. You're contemplating, hmm, do I call in sick tomorrow? But I, I ended up going to work like a trooper, but then I slept the whole weekend. Other than coming to the rink. Uh, game five was really the only game that got away from the Colts from two. The you know the battalion winning that game seven to three, um, where they scored. I think it was three goals in like two minutes in the second period. Just bang, 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 and everyone's kind of, what is going on here? So, you felt pretty good going into game six. And again, credit to Barry. Their playoff lives were on the line, uh, coming away with a big victory, which was tied in the third period uh, with Tyler Savard getting a good uh, goal in that one, and then. Battalion coming here, not they kind of looked flat in Game Seven through the first forty, uh, before they really turned it on, and and that's the part of with the battalion that scares the depth is once it gets rolling, it's very hard to contend with, and uh, the troops coming away with a big victory there. Now, one thing that's happened all playoffs long is huge crowds here at Memorial Gardens. It's a sellout, I believe, all series long here. Same thing in Peterborough, which is going to be great for these battalion players on the road, but. Um, just the crowd here on Tuesday night, kind of out of it for the first 40 minutes, I'd say. But just talk about how electric got, got in here once Kyle Jackson and Kyle McDonald scored bang, bang, they were two minutes apart. Well, you know, being part of the media, you're not supposed to be too biased. Of course, here I sit with a battalion <laughs> shirt on. I'm a little bit biased. Uh, myself and, and uh, Chris Dawson, who's my editor with Bay Today, we're sitting at the other end of the media booth. Each time the goal scored, we're standing up and we're hooting and hollering because it's hard not to when this place is so loud and you're like, it shakes. Yeah. It feels like the building's falling apart at the seams when it gets to that point because it's, it's just it's a smaller rink, but when you get 4,000 plus strong in here, uh, it just does something here. When you get the Go Troops Go Chant going as well, there's just something crazy about it as well. And that it kind of harkens back to the first two seasons that the battalion were here because that's the kind of crowds that they had when they went to back to back Eastern Conference Finals and then the OHL Finals the first year. Um, this building shook. It felt like it was falling apart on game night. And that's what it's been like the last uh, round and a half. Now, this Peterborough Peets team comes out. A huge series win against the Ottawa 67s. They're coming in hot. What did a battalion need to do to keep them cold? Well, that's the thing is that the uh, the Peets, yes, they're coming off a big series win, but they almost gave it away. They did give it away in one game yeah. uh, where they're up 4-1 to one as a Leaf fan. Uh, not, a, not a good feeling when you see that, although they reversed it a little bit with Tampa, and hopefully that stays the same. Um, and then they almost gave it away in game six again, yeah. you know, being up 5-1 to one at one point in that game, or 4-1 to one at least going into the third, and then winning that one 5-4. to four. So um, the thing about the Peets is that they have a lot of offensive options, whereas... The Colts were kind of a team that, yes, they have offensive options, but the bottom half of their lineup isn't really as deep. The Peets don't have depth, I don't think, that rivals the Battalion, but they have a lot better depth than they've seen all playoffs long. So it's going to be tight uh, with that one. And, of course, Michael Simpson, to me, is the second-best goalie in the league to Dom DiVincenzo. So I think it might be a goaltending duel, uh, duel throughout these seven games. Absolutely. Now, obviously, this Peets team's coming in hot, but first two games here in North Bay. Tough crowd to play against. Uh, yeah. The Peets. The Peets are going to be in tough, but what do you think they need to do to not only fight off the crowd, but fight off the battalion? Well, a quick goal always kind of remedies that, of course. You know, um, 
whenever the uh, you come in as an away team and you take the fans out of it. And, you know, we saw that with Barry in the first period getting a goal, and it was able to kind of silence the fans for uh, the majority of the game, 40 minutes at least. So I think the Peets need to do that, and they need to play a strong uh, game and special teams, of course, with uh, everything going on. But, you know, also here in North Bay, I think somebody might be a little bit happy to see his former team, and that's Greg LeBurge, who's a color analyst with uh, your TV North Bay, former Peter Rowe Peets legend, so you might be a little bit excited to see his, the Peets play here today. Now, straying away from this series a little bit, you're with the Frontline Podcast. Just kind of talk about how that started and where it's kind of <laughs> gone for you. Uh, yeah, so that kind of came out of uh, the pandemic, really, is what it was born out of. Um, my buddy and I, Tom Parisi, who used to do play-by-play on Country 600 CKAT here, we were just kind of bored and we were like, let's talk about hockey. And I had been covering the battalion for a few years through uh, the radio broadcast and also through uh, your TV here in North Bay. And basically, I for our first episode, I looked at my phone contact and I said, well, I have Adam Dennis's phone number. Let's see if he wants to come on the podcast. So it never started to be a battalion thing. And then it just kind of became, well, I have Adam Dennis. And then, hey, Adam, can you send us Ty Nelson? Hey, Adam, can you send us this? And then basically the team came to us and was like, hey, you want to make a, an official kind of thing and make it a battalion-centric podcast? And, so we did, and through the pandemic, well, our first full year of the podcast, we didn't have any live hockey to talk about. We were, yeah. we were talking about, oh, maybe the season will start. Oh, no, it's not starting. Well, maybe the season will, and then you know how that went. Um, and then when the regular season started last year, you know, there's no radio broadcast for the battalion anymore. Right. So uh, Matt Sukram, who's been a good friend for a few years, also another play-by-play uh, man with Country 600, came to me and said, why don't we do a YouTube broadcast and put it under the Frontline uh, umbrella? And it's essentially a radio broadcast on YouTube. We can't show you the game, but that's kind of how everything kind of came uh, together. And now it's kind of ballooned into something that's almost, uh, it's wild. It's like a rolling stone down a hill. You can't stop it. Now, one guy that's kind of become a fan favorite, I'd say, on the podcast, and if his career with the Seattle Kraken doesn't ever work out, he could probably <laughs> help you guys with it. But Ty Nelson, just talk yeah. about having him on not only as a guest, but I know he co-hosted at least one episode. Yeah, he co-hosted our 100th episode special. He had a lot of Zoom issues trying to get on there, <laughs> which we joke about. We put it actually in our happy birthday Ty Nelson uh, video of him trying to figure out Zoom. Um, but, yeah, he, he hopped on. Earlier in the year, he told us, hey, I want to co-host an episode but I want to do it if it's with DeVincentis because they're, you know, childhood buddies yeah. and stuff. So uh, we figured, yeah, we'll have DV on for uh, our 100th episode and we'll have Nelly come on. Coordinated it all. He called me that day. You know, what are we going to talk about? What are we going to do? I said, Nelly, you're running the show, buddy. I'm just going to be there. Have fun with it. Run with it. He came prepared. He had all these questions. Uh, he knew what he was talking about. He was ready to throw uh, DeVincentis under the bus too, of course. So um, it was pretty fun. And, uh, you know, he's a, he's a great hockey player. And when you watch him, he's very noticeable out on the ice, but he's an even better person off the ice. Uh, always willing to give you a handshake, ask you how your day has been, you know, even post-game, even if it's been a rough one, when he's out there signing autographs for the kids, he always stops by and says hello. Now you mentioned there, Dom DiVincente, a yeah. draft pick of the Winnipeg Jets. He's been a staple here in North Bay for a number of years. Just talk about what he's brought to his battalion club. Uh, consistency and calmness from the back end, and that's not a slight at Joe Verbetic, who played really well for the battalion last year as well. Just whatever Joe did last year, DiVincentis has elevated from that. And you saw it in the playoffs last year too when DiVincentis took over as uh, the starting goaltender in round two against Kingston, and then he was the starting goaltender through that third round sweep in the Eastern Conference Finals as well. Um, it just spoke volumes to what this team thought of him because they didn't decide to go back to Verbetic at all in that series. They kept going with DiVincentis. Um, and he's just, every time he gets the puck, you know, he's redirecting the puck into the safe areas. He doesn't give up many rebounds in front of him, and if he does, he's on the puck right away. Uh, you know, on the back of his helmet, he's got tiger eyes because, you know, he, he likes that. That's just his favorite animal, and he's also got reflexes like a tiger. And it's evident when you see it uh, out on the ice how he's playing. So um, he's just a calming and steadying force on this team. And you don't ever see him get too high, and you don't ever see him get too low with his ba- uh, moods and whatnot. Uh, and once again, coming from the Ty Nelson school of uh, being a human, he's a, he's a great person off the ice too. Now we've got the lineups in front of us here. Who are some of the guys you're looking out for in this series from either team that you think are going to have a big series here? Well, of course, I'm going to start in that with Michael Simpson for the piece because, like I said, I think he's the second-best goalie. Uh, no disrespect to – maybe it's a 1A, 1B situation in the league between the two of them. Um, I'm also really excited to see, you know, Owen Beck hasn't really had as good a playoff run as I think people would have thought, especially playing a game in Montreal this year. You know, you don't get 
even though it was an emergency call up, you know, Montreal obviously thought well yeah. enough of him to call him up. Um, and of course, his world junior teammate Brendan Othman. I, I really like the game of J.R. Avon, though. He's got speed to burn. Uh, and I think he'll be a good player. On the battalion side of things, Pasquale Zito's quietly had a really good playoff run. Uh, Kyle McDonald, of course, you know, the top goal getter so far in the OHL playoffs. Uh, and him and Nelson and Petrov are sneaking up on Clark's mark that he had for points yeah. as well. Um, which he's still remarkably far ahead because of how <laughs> yeah. good a series he had in Hamilton. Um, but, of course, on the back end, I'm really going to circle in on uh, Tanai smith Ern, who made his return to the lineup. Uh, in the second round after only playing one game in the regular season, but he's uh, he's looked pretty solid and uh, pretty stable on the back end for the battalion. And I think if there's a key to shutting people down, I think Tanias Mathurin is going to hold that key. Yeah, and we'll talk about Tanias here. Obviously, just one game this season. Coming back in the lineup here for the battalion, what do you think he's going to bring in this series? He's a big body. Um, he's a big boy when you watch him out there on the ice. He's uh, he's intimidating. Of course, off the ice, one of the nicest guys you'll meet as well. So he, uh, him and that 2020 draft class of Nelson, Wakeley, Mathurin, Van Steensel, Devin Jennings are all kind of cut from the same cloth where they're great people off the ice. But Mathurin is a huge presence on the ice. You know, he's somebody that I don't want to say the battalion missed because the battalion, well, they would have missed him for sure, but the battalion still played well in his uh, absence. But coming back into the lineup, I mean, they won the first two games that he was back in the lineup the one in over double overtime in Barry, and then the one back here. And then even in game, uh, the third game, which is game six, he didn't look out of place in Barry. Um, the battalion have done a good job of sheltering him early because he's, you know, still getting back up to game speed, but he's. I, I said last year I think he's the, one of the best shutdown defenders in the league, and he's proven that here in this playoffs. Absolutely, and as you mentioned, Michael Simpson, quite a guy to watch, but Liam Stuska is also a good goaltender in this league. Yes. Had a fight against the Ottawa 67s <laughs> actually this year. So what do you kind of look for him just in case there's the option of Simpson not going as well as the Pete's hope? Well, you know, in, in a lot of options or a lot of situations, uh, you know, people like to think or like to think, oh, you got the backup goalie in, you know, now it's now there's blood in the water type of thing. Well, with Peterborough, it doesn't really, there's not much of a drop off. You know, as you mentioned, Stuska, great season for him uh, in the maroon and white. And um I don't think he's going to get much action because I do think Simpson's going to hold down the fort. Uh, but he's uh, he's a good option, and obviously the crease in Peterborough's in good hands when Simpson eventually leaves. Now, obviously, games one and two are here, games three and four in Peterborough. Quick turnaround, though, for games three and four, Tuesday, Wednesday. What did Battalion have to do after that? Because they're playing three games in four days. Yeah, and you know what? The Battalion, uh, they did that with um, game six and seven with Barry. They were able to get home, get rested. You know, Barry had maybe a little bit more sleep than them because they were at home. Uh, maybe they were out partying, I don't know. I had a big game six victory, but um, yeah, the battalion are no uh, strangers to that quick turnaround. And I think that uh, Ryan Ulihan said it a lot in those playoffs uh, where he's, you know, rest, uh, you know, nutrition, you know, relaxation in between games is big, basically the, the main uh, component now, especially with how deep we are in the playoffs. So I think the battalion are going to hold steady on that, and I think we'll see a lot of that coming up. Now you mentioned their head coach, Ryan Olihan. Just talk about what he's brought to his squad and kind of helped them all season long. Yeah, so it's been uh, a wild change since the uh, change and promotion of Ryan Olihan to interim head coach at the time, December 10th. 2019 and then eventually taking off the interim tag and Adam Dennis also being moved up to uh, uh, to general manager status you know it's been a whole culture uh, reset for the battalion and uh, you know that's the biggest thing that I think that those two can bring to this team and have brought to this team is a culture uh, identity and a culture change um, and that's kind of what they've lived through you know the bleed green stuff and everything because Ryan played for this team he was a captain of this team and his uh, coaching, I you know I'm not a big X's and O's guy. I sit there and watch, oh, well, they were outshot, so they mustn't have played all that well. And it goes to show how little I know, but um, Ryan just brings a really calming presence to that bench. And uh, the one time he joked after the game six uh, clinch in Mississauga that, you know, maybe he has a few more extra gray hairs on his head, but usually he's pretty even keel. Now, as you look down at the ice here, you got the Bobby Orr Trophy mm -hmm. uh, logo on the ice. What would it mean to this city to have a championship series logo on that ice? Uh, it would be huge because uh, we saw it once here before, 10 years ago, when they came to town in 2013-14 against the Guelph Storm. Battalion didn't fare so well in that series, losing in five. 
but the city was electric, uh, you know, through those two games that we hosted here, and it was it was just something special to see. You know, the year before there was no OHL hockey here in yeah. and then next thing we have the J. Ross Robertson Memorial, uh, you know, trophy out on the ice, and you know the battalion are one step away from getting to that Memorial Cup uh, status. So speaking from a fan's perspective, uh, it would be huge, absolutely huge. Speaking from a broadcaster's perspective, anything that keeps us going longer, we're pretty happy. Absolutely, and we're here at the end of April right now. Did you think at the start of the season you'd still be doing broadcast for battalion <laughs> hockey? Well, uh, yes, and I, I could say yes, yeah, because last year, I mean, with the, the, the you know, things being moved out and stretched so long, uh, we didn't stop until the beginning of June. Yeah. It was essentially June, and at that point, I was kind of like, okay, I'm, I'm ready to go play some golf, guys. <laughs> like, come on, like, let's go. But, you know, that's a good thing when the team's playing late. When we're this late into April, when the sun's out as it was today, I mean, it's supposed to be a miserable weekend the rest of the way, but when the sun's out and you're coming to the rink, you know, it doesn't get much more Canadian than coming to the rink in shorts. So I'm, I'm always a fan of this type of hockey. Uh, and I figured at the beginning of the year that the battalion would be playing longer than the Leafs. <laughs> and that's me as a Leafs fan. But the Leafs have done pretty good so far. So uh, the longer we go into the spring, the happier I am. Now this uh, past couple little weeks or so, there's been the OHL draft under 16 and then just the U18 draft. Just talk about what... Um, the battalion have brought into the organization and what you're kind of looking forward to from those picks? Well, uh, I haven't done a deep dive in the U16 draft itself because we're going to do that with uh, Adam Dennis here coming up on the front line where he's going to give us the big scouting reports on everybody. Um, Carter Kostich, all I know is that they were very excited to get the, get him. And the last time the battalion were very excited to have a player fall, probably fall to them, Dallin Wakeley has put up 50 goals in two seasons. So... Uh, when the battalion brass gets excited, I get excited. Um, and then their defenseman, I believe Zach Wilson, well, he was here the one game, and man, is he pretty tall. He, yeah. He's a little scary, and he's uh, 15 turning 16, right? So on the U18 side, I can speak a lot more to that one right now because I uh, covered the Trappers all year long, uh, and you know, doing broadcasts. And Nate Gravel, a uh, great player for those Trappers teams, uh, very uh, skilled. He's a two-way player, but he's very skilled offensively. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he actually gets a crack at some point. Um, and obviously the affiliate team, Powassa Voodoo's are salivating, hoping to get him into the lineup next year as well. And then Caleb Dawson, uh, once again, just a great moment for him. He was pat These two were passed over last year. Both of them have played on the same team since Novice. So they're buddies. They're really excited for one another. And actually, you can catch Caleb Dawson on our most recent episode that came out today. He came into our studio and recorded a quick little 10-minute segment with him. He's very excited. Uh, and also being a friend of the family, I'm very excited for him as well. Absolutely. Now, if you know the area of North Bay, Powassan just about 20 minutes south of here. So how cool is it to have not only the battalion here, but you've got the Junior A Powassan Voodoo just right below you guys south here who are an actual affiliate of the battalion. Yeah, it's really cool. And you know what? There's some really good hockey in Powassan. A lot of people seem to think, well, it's Junior A compared to Major Junior. Uh, the hockey is fantastic in Boston. I can't say enough things about what uh, ownership Jim Bruce and, and head coach Peter Goulet and Chris Dawson, the general manager, have done for that team and that organization. Uh, of course, working closely with Adam Dennis and Ryan Ulihan with the battalion, um, which obviously helps when you get a player that's, you know, probably going to end up play major junior like Tyson Risman, but couldn't play this year due to, you know, how deep the battalion were. Um, it's just really fun and it's really easy too to call them up. They're only 20, 20 minutes down the road, and most of the kids actually billet in North Bay, so they're very, uh, you know, getting ingrained in the area. It's yep. not like it's not like before they had the affiliate in Pembroke, so right. they're living in Pembroke, which is two and a half hours away. You know, it's a little bit tougher to ingrain yourself in the community when you're in Pembroke. Absolutely. Now we hit the six o'clock hour here, an hour away from Pop Chop, we're at 20, 25 minutes away from warm up and we can see that there's fans already in the stands a lot of times in junior hockey you don't see this but in this building it seems like the fans get here early and it gets loud even during warm up so just talk about that in this building all season long especially in playoffs now because it seems like it's like four rows <laughs> deep in the warm up and it's it's people everywhere yeah thankfully for you as a photographer you get down there and you're able to bustle your way <laughs> yeah. in but um, yeah it's, it's a little bit tough to see for sure uh, it's, it's pretty uh, standing room only down by the glass and 
you know, it's it's a little, you know, get your elbows out and obviously you can get some looks at these guys. But uh, North Bay is a very, uh, usually, when I worked at the movie theater in town, and North Bay was usually a show up on time type of uh, town where well, the movie doesn't start till 6.50, we'll show up at 6.55 type of thing. Well, they love their battalion hockey and they're really excited to see how well they're doing. So they show up loud and proud here early and, uh, of course, it gives the guys goosebumps when they're out there for their 15-minute warm-up. For sure. Well, on behalf of the listeners, Courtney, thank you for coming on here today. Hopefully it goes well for the battalion and we're back up here for a championship series. I know the city of North Bay is looking forward to it, but thank you so much, sir, for coming on today. Oh, thank and you. Go battalion, go. I appreciate that and I appreciate all the uh, wonderful photos you've sent our way, too, that we're able to use on social media. So thanks for having us. And like you said, go troops, go.